All right. So, hi everyone. Uh, I see that some participants are already in our session, in our webinar session today. Um, I would suggest to wait a couple of minutes till uh, everyone has a chance to log in. And we'll start in a couple of minutes. It's great to have you here. So maybe we are, uh, we wait one more minute and after that we'll start straight away. So, I think we're good, and all the particip uh, part participants were still on the way. Uh, the session will be open, so everyone can join. Um, welcome, everybody, and I hope you are doing well uh, to today's uh, webinar session, uh, where we are going to speak about the uh, migration of Oracle reports to the technology Jasper reports and about uh, PITS experiences with uh, both technologies. Um, I'm very happy to have you uh, with me as participants today, um, because I think uh, the topic, what we are going to discuss today is very important. Uh, this is also um, uh, one of uh, the points uh, of uh, the registrations, what we saw in the last days. Uh, we have today more than 150 registrations, so I think the topic is uh, worldwide a very uh, interesting and uh, very um, special uh, topic for everybody in different companies. A short introduction from uh, our side and from the speaker side. Ah, I see. So, all right. There we are. Uh, so today, um, as I said, a short introduction from our speaker side. Uh, my name is Johannes. Uh, I will be today the host and the moderator in our webinar uh, session um, at PITS. I'm uh, the account manager, one of the account managers, and I'm very happy to, uh, uh, to host and to moderate today. For the whole technical adventure, uh, we invited and are very happy to have with us today our senior consultant, Stefan LaRocca, uh, who is also leading the product and business development department at PITS. Uh, Stefan will guide us uh, through our modernization process today uh, in a live demo of the PITS product and give us some insights on a PITS way to migrate. Hi, Stefan. Uh, it is great to have you with us today, and I'm very curious about your presentation. Hi, Johannes. Thanks for inviting me to this uh, wonderful webinar. And you say, said it right, it will be a technical adventure. So I have a lot of live demos and crossing my fingers <laughs> that everything works fine. Great. Before we start, 
and uh, right after Stefan's insights uh, as stated in our agenda, uh, we will get into a live Q&A after that uh, and try to answer your questions. Uh, I already have seen that uh, there arrived a lot of uh, questions on uh, different uh, topics and uh, different modernization topics. So uh, very curious and interesting also to uh, uh, for our Q&A session today. Last but not least, uh, we will give you also an overview of uh, how you can start with uh, your Oracle report migration and uh, which is a possible next step also for you. So let's begin with a short introduction uh, of PITS. Um, just to introduce PITS, as a company and let you know what we are doing at PITS uh, currently and uh, what we also have done in, in the last uh, time and years. So for more than two decades, we uh, support our customers in the migration of their existing legacy systems with our product family for the modernization of Oracle technologies and our specialized technology knowledge. From uh, four locations in Europe and in the USA, we ran, we ran more than 800 projects in uh, more than 40 uh, countries successfully and supported our clients and partners to simplify complexity. So again, a very warm uh, welcome today from our side, and it is great to have you with us. Before I give uh, the floor to Stefan for his presentation and for the live demo, I would like to start a poll to get a quick overview about your current situation, because I think, as uh, I uh, told before, we have different uh, companies and uh, different um, roles also in our, uh, in our um, uh, webinar today. So I think it is uh, very interesting to see also your current situation in your company today. So just a second to start the poll. So, so very curious uh, about your answers. So uh, the question, how many active Oracle reports do you have currently? Very interesting also to see how big the applications in your companies are um, uh, because of uh, changes, uh, chances uh, also for, for Jasper report and for uh, future technologies. Great. I see there are a lot of people who are, who are answering. Just a couple of seconds. All right. So, great. And I will stop that and share the results with you. All right. So we see that 44% of the participants today um, have uh, 300, uh, less than 300 Oracle reports. Um, from 301 to 1,000 Oracle uh, reports have 39%, and more than 1,000 uh, Oracle reports uh, are currently active in 17% of, of participants today. Great. Very interesting, and I think uh, this is also going to be very interesting also um, for uh, for the live demo of uh, Stefan, in uh, which I would uh, uh, directly give you the floor. Okay. Uh, so, if you, so I will stop sharing. This one. Okay, so I start with my desktop. Uh, you could see my slide, I believe. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Janis, for uh, the introduction. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, I, I'm I'm um, uh, pleased to run throughout today's uh, webinar. Um, talk about the um, migration from Oracle reports to Jasper reports with uh, some uh, information around about the the first question is what why is it 
even necessary to uh, migrate from Oracle reports. And I just like to redirect directly to the Oracle statement of direction from April 2019. It's still the latest one, still valid. I just cross checked that yesterday. And you may know that as an Oracle customer that Oracle no longer develop Oracle reports and uh, just uh, advise to customers to move away from Oracle reports, uh, in their case, uh, to BI Publisher. So the actual uh, version 12C release 2, that is 12214. To be correct, for Oracle reports, it's 12213 because there are no changes between these uh, minor releases, is August 2020. So we are near to uh, the end of uh, um, this uh, premium support for the running Oracle uh, report. There are a possibility to uh, get longer support, but I believe it makes more sense to take uh, this effort and, and just uh, think about a migration to another technology. And um, as I said, and um, a couple of questions come with the uh, registration of the webinar. Um, what is uh, the difference between the two different technologies uh, for Oracle BI Publisher? Um, to be correct, we should name it uh, Analytics Publisher. That is the latest name uh, for this product um, and Jasper Reports. So in our house and Personally, myself, we have a couple of experience with both tools. So we have products and, and projects running with BI Publisher as well as with Jasper Reports. And for me, there are different use cases, uh, which I would like to shortly describe in this table. If you want to get more uh, insight and more detailed information, there is a, a, a business white paper available on our webpage for the differences between Jasper Reports and Oracle BI Publisher. So take a look at that and, and just register for the white paper to get more detail. First of all, there's a license uh, issue or distinguish between a difference between uh, these two tools. Um, Oracle BI Publisher is bound for an Oracle Forms customer. So if you're a Forms customer running under support for your WebLogic server infrastructure, you could use the Oracle BI Publisher. Uh, but if you want to go away once a day from, from this WebLogic server installation or uh, license or infrastructure, you have to uh, buy a license for the analytics publisher. Jasper reports provide different editions. And there is one uh, named as community edition, which is free for use. It's an open source uh, tool. And uh, most of the uh, requirements you fulfill today with Oracle reports are coverable by the community edition. Second one may perhaps the uh, IDE, so the environment in which you develop the uh, to uh, the reports, and that is for me it's one downsize from the BI publisher because you have to rely on Microsoft Word for the layout uh, editor if it if it comes to pixel perfect printing, and sometimes that's for me it's a little bit mess. Uh, for Jasper Reports, you have a Jasper Studio based on Eclipse. It's, so if you are familiar with Eclipse, you are very, very uh, fast in uh, stepping into uh, developing with Jasper Reports. Oracle Reports may have a lot of PLSQL and you will rely on Oracle Database with a lot of PLSQL. So that is good news for both of those tools. Uh, you could reuse your PLSQL code in, uh, for BI Publisher, even if you put it that into the database and, and use them inside the data model or in the usual trigger and events before and after some report events. Uh, for Jasper reports, there, as soon as that is following a principle of a Java development, you could uh, reuse the existing database connection uh, to the database um, and create a couple of callable statements to reuse PLSQL from database side. A couple of questions came along with the integration in forms, and that's a good news for both of them. For 12C, Oracle Forms 12C, it's very, very straightforward. There is uh, uh, just a property inside forms to integrate the BI publisher. For Jasper reports, we will see in the live demo, it's even possible with a simple web show document to call the reports and hand over parameters, whatever you want to do. From my personal perspective and that what I saw in the in the different projects uh, what is the highlight I believe it's necessary to distinguish these tools from the purpose so if you want to uh, create a couple of 
some self-services to your customer, if you want to uh, use some, some bursting capabilities to create multiple different outputs with one run of a report. And if you want to really uh, decouple uh, the data model from the layout, BI Publisher is a good choice. Um, if you want to have something like from developer perspective, something like reusability of components, we will see that later on, uh, and want to rely on a large open source community and want to have really, really pixel perfect and flexible layout capabilities, just for reports will be the first uh, choice. From the low, low lights, what is the problem with these different tools? There's a learning curve uh, for BI Publisher taking care about XSLFO. Um, it's a, um, a describing language for layout capabilities, uh, which you have to learn to use that in, uh, in Word. Um, you are bound to the functionality of Word. And yeah, even if we want to go ahead from uh, your entire application, um, it's, it's a matter of license costs. From Jasper reports, um, there are some, some functionalities which need a couple of extra coding in Java. So something like direct printing uh, a PDF to, to a printer. Um, and even the SQL designer itself is not the best tool. So creating SQL statements for the queries may be done better in SQL developer or PL SQL developer or something like that um, to make them um, easy to use. So that comes up with a question from my side. Um, do you really um, decide uh, which is the best target technology for you? Do you already decide that Jasper Reports is your future technology or not? So give us uh, some feedback. Uh, there's a, a poll running uh, and ask you for feedback um, if you already decide to go with Jasper or not. So give them some seconds. You answer very quickly. That's nice. Thank you for that. So there's, I believe we hit the high watermark from the first poll. So I could stop. And that's very interesting, uh, uh, interesting results. So there is a more or less 50-50 uh, part if, if Jasper is really um, the, the, the best tool for you or not. So perhaps uh, today helps you to get a better insight on Jasper and to see uh, how these is uh, running in, 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 from the view of, of a migration um, to get more familiar with, with Jasper. On the other hand, I can only advise it's an open source tool. It's easy to download and to run and to get some experience with this. And if you need some support or training, we are here for you. Okay, so let's go and take a look more detail in, uh, in Jasper. So as I said, it's a Jasper, it's an open uh, source tool. So there is no directly vendor lock. Uh, there's really, really, really in, uh, a big open source community asking or answering every question. Um, there is a, um, a vendor behind TIPCO. Uh, so if you are rely on support, or want to have some more BI related capabilities, you could upgrade your edition uh, and, and get a, a license one from TIPCO. So the output is very, very uh, uh, broad. Uh, so from all different kind of output formula, uh, functionalities you could use, it's a Java based uh, application. So you could use the uh, reports or the Jasper server as a standalone server, but you could integrate them into any kind of Java EE application if you like. So it could be used by a Java library to make them uh, running. So from our perspective, what we saw in, in our migration project, what is really cool to use is, uh, is a very flexible layout. You could implement more or less exactly the same and more as you did in, in Oracle report. So um, there, everything what you do with um, conditional formatting functions and, and procedures you will do in either Java or JavaScript. So very familiar languages. And, and I believe the knowledge is uh, already existing on our customer base. 
So it run on various platforms uh, for pixel perfect printing. And one of the cool features, um, you could um, modelize, uh, modularize your reports by generating or using sub reports. So if you have uh, reusable components in your existing um, reports like for a, an address page or a f uh, frame or a frame for uh, some articles which are you reused in different reports, you could do define them once and reuse them in many, many reports. That is very helpful for maintenance issues. Even if we talk about very simple things like a common header or footer, um, that may be difficult for Oracle reports to keep them in sync. If you, uh, if I saw there are customers out there with more than thousand reports, if you want to keep in sync all headers and footers, oh, that's a that's a difficult uh, approach. But it's very very easy to achieve that with uh, with Jasper. Um, if we take care about moving from Oracle reports to Jasper. Um, we, we have to take care about some different concepts. So if we start as an Oracle report developer and we want to be familiar with Jasper at the end, so there are some, some points you have to take care about. So queries and, and groups are treating, uh, treating a little bit different. So in Oracle reports, you create one select and by moving items to a group, you create a couple of groups. So that is, covering by different kind of data sets in, in, uh, in Jasper reports. That gives you more flexibility. It seems to be more complex in the beginning, but in the end you could improve the performance uh, while uh, developing uh, special SQL statements for uh, your child's and, and details rather than having one big select selecting everything. So next part is um, the sections you know from Oracle reports will get banned. So everything is taken care on column header band and detail band and footer band. So the layout concept is a little bit different. Frames itself, that is especially repeating frames, uh, will you have to decide to implement them either as list or as I said before, you could define sub reports to make them reusable. And on the other hand, uh, everything is written in PL SQL. You have to take care about that as an expression language or last but not least, um, writing them as scriptlets inside uh, the Jasper reports. So having that in mind, we start working on a migration project. Uh, we define on our own a an, an modernization process. So that is, uh, we follow a principal path through a migration to not only close the eyes and move or mm, copy one Oracle report to a Jasper report. It should be end up with a with a best practice Jasper uh, report you could achieve. So there are a couple of steps necessary in between, uh, taking care about a preparation phase to get a, a specific um, requirement specification for the reports, then the migration itself. Um, there will be a couple of effort left for the developer you will see we will see that for the fine tuning phase and the the uh, last but not least the original testing uh, from the Jasper reports where we could definitely support so if we take care about this rough uh, process we will step into that uh, uh, in detail in a second the last poll for today uh, is a question if you already um, have some modernization in mind so that you uh, already anyhow in this uh, process or not. So last question for today, uh, are you already in a, in a specific stage of your modernization process? So do you have already evaluated the technologies or are you just to decide but waiting a management decision? Or are you running already a modernization and taking care about one or the other report um, to see what could be the best result? Okay, once more, many thanks for the very, very quick response. That's very helpful for us and focusing on the content. Thanks for that. Um, so let me share the results for here. So, 
that is uh, uh, fits to the first poll that there's a 50-50 decision between reports or not, just for reports or not, that most of uh, the participants are just evaluate the technologies. And uh, good to see that uh, one of three is already on the run uh, to migrate reports to another technology. So and I believe we could help for exactly those. Um, so let's go ahead with our content and dive into um, the steps which we see to improve the quality and the possibility of the reports if we go to Jasper. And that will be taking care about three parts, data model, report, a paper layout, and the program units. So first of all, let's take a look at the data model. So you know a data model in Oracle reports consists of a couple of select statements, which underneath um, have these uh, these groups. Um, I saw in the past only one customer who really take care about keeping identical SQL statements over different reports in Zync by extracting them into an external SQL file. Most of our customers copy and paste uh, reused uh, SQL statements from one report to the other. And then you make a small adjustment over here, forget it over there. So we identify with our tool duplicates or more or less similar queries to allow them to refactor them. So we increase quality by um, identifying these duplicate queries, and we are able to refactor them to database. So um, we could either do that in kind of uh, a view layer on top of your um, on top of your uh, data model. If it should be more general, we could uh, generate REST services uh, for these uh, statements because uh, Jasper Reports is designed and easy to uh, configure to use REST service as well. Or we could do that on, on a base form of stored function and procedures. So that helps us to, um, to uh, improve the data model. Last but not least, if you are using multiple functions which are designed or defined in each report, even there we could identify duplicates and move them to database to make them reusable. So there's a preparation needed for the data model. The same we did for uh, the logic. So there you may know you, you quickly generate a, a format trigger with return to by misusing the reports developer we don't migrate them, that is uh, not necessary. But the other way around is much more interesting. So if you have a, a report where you uh, ignore printing object with a return false only uh, trigger, that is often done because I'm not sure if this change will be uh, declined afterwards. So I, this is still in the code, but we could ignore those things and, and uh, remove them for the migration. So there will be elements which are part of these object and underneath won't be part of the migration. Last but not least, there is uh, some things we have to take care about during the migration. That is that a couple of components are no longer work in the same way as before, like very often customers tend to create a text file beside printing something uh, like a CSV file or something like this. Uh, just for cover GS, uh, CSV export very easily and totally different. So text IO is some of those things which we won't migrate to the new technology. So we define together in a preparation phase and in the architecture phase, um, a common uh, solution for, for all of your reports. So that is taking care about uh, the uh, data model and the logic. Let's take a look on the layout. So what if we even touch any every report, it's a good idea to take care about the layout and try to see if we could improve them. So what we check during the migration is the usage of your fonts. Do you really use uh, a consistent set of fonts inside your um, reports or do you mix? And we saw that a couple of exceptions are over there that in most cases, one font is used, but there are exceptions. And it's easy for us in the migration to consolidate them. The same take place for format mask for number and date. So there is a huge amount of different fonts or uh, format mask used. We could consolidate them to bring them to a smaller subset and you could decide what should be replaced with uh, a newer um, format mask. And last but not least, um, 
there is, as I said before, um, it's easy for us to extract header and footer from the Oracle reports and uh, make them as one header and one footer, which could be reused over either a subset and cluster of reports or through all different kinds of reports. So even uh, we saw customers who run in different format sites of their pages, even that could be um, harmonized and synchronized over all reports. So that is uh, what we do in the, in the preparation phase to achieve the best result possible. How could we get there? What is the way we achieve that? First of all, we start, and that is what we saw before in an analyze phase. So by loading all of your reports and running in our application data cube, we could um, um, create a lot of data, which allow us a very deep insight into your reporting environment without taking necessary every report in the report developer and run through. So you will see an Excel chart. We will download that later on from our software, uh, which give us some metrics for each report. And as you see before, we evaluate the fonts, we evaluate different format mask, uh, we identify duplicate reports, duplicate queries, etc. That is all done in our analyze phase. And this analyze phase ends up in a really deep calculated uh, project plan with um, very um, detailed effort, which is needed to migrate all these reports. We know exactly after this evaluation, what is possible to migrate with our tool approach and what will be left for the green bubbles to do the refinement. Uh, if we uh, have this understanding, we could do this uh, preparation phase and start with the migration. The migration itself is covered by our product, uh, which um, first load all the reports into our repository. We split them down uh, to each line of code, to each query, to each uh, repeating frame, etc. So down to property level. And with this, you could uh, generate uh, the uh, appropriate reports uh, step by step. So you could decide them to do them uh, on one step and, and press a migration button uh, or do that for cluster, etc. We will do that uh, in a live demo in a second. So we want to end up with a better solution uh, for reporting. So we unify fonts and format masks into the new technology. We are able to extract multi-language. So if you have fixed text as boilerplate and labels inside your report, we are able to extract them and uh, provide them or prepare them for uh, a classical multi-language uh, approach uh, in Jasper. We are able to uh, ease uh, printing directions. So there's no need to duplicate reports only while you have some hidden columns or different printing directions. We are generating uh, reports for the header and footer and reusable components. And perhaps we add some watermarks to see that is my test environment and that is my production environment. And if necessary, we also adjust your naming convention. So the migration itself, as I started, uh, is not only closing the eyes and taking everything which is inside the report and bring them to Jasper, it's uh, an improvement in quality and uh, we use the best of functionality out of Jasper um, to create a new infrastructure environment for you. What we generate by now is what we cover over here. So uh, you see everything is more or less um, taking over into the appropriate objects in Jasper. Um, there are a couple of things like using different web sources or system parameters or cross product uh, layouts, which we do not cover by now. Uh, the, the reason by cross products is that they are so rare in our running projects by now that it's uh, easier to, to create them with a wizard from scratch rather than migrating them. So we only take over the SQL statement, but ignore the layout. Um, but it, that depends on, on the analyze on your environment, how many uh, cross products we will see and if it's necessary to adjust something in our generator capabilities. Beside the code we generate, we also generate a couple of um, to-do lists and to-do tasks. So 
to each report, you will get a, a protocol of objects which are created. Uh, so you could see a before and after uh, assignment. But at the end of these lists, you also see components which are not generated. And in, in our case, on the left right side, you see there's a conditional formatting with a couple of information, a couple of PL SQL code, which has to do in, in a, uh, by, by manual work. But the developer will see that in his list of tasks that this field uh, needs a conditional formatting. And you see the original code to see uh, if it's appropriate to do that with JavaScript or a scriptlet or whatever, it's appropriate in Jasper for this. These information are um, bound together for each report and you, we are able to hand over these lists um, to a ticket system and from, for our favor, uh, it's JIRA. We run all our projects with JIRA. So we could um, uh, fill and, and pre-fill a JIRA board with all necessary tasks to run the fine tuning uh, work for a migration. And uh, with this, we also uh, hand over or put into JIRA uh, a weight of the report. So due to the fact that we exactly know what is missing and what is to do in the fine tuning phase, we also able to calculate the effort which is necessary to do this. And we do that with a, a, a complexity measurement uh, following the scrum principles. So that is a weight. And you see the weight for each report in these gray bubbles. And with this, we could use uh, JIRA very, very good and, and straightforward in, in an agile manner for sprinting. And you see that we could create a sprint down, a burn down chart for our Apex uh, for migrating the reports. You see if you're in track and everything is working fine. <clears throat> if we do the migration and do step by step, there was also a need to uh, test all those reports and testing of report may be a mess if you do that without any support and without any tools uh, because you have to type in once more every day every release every different kind of scenarios for each report and compare the pdf results so we cover uh, a tool in our tool a possibility to to do these tests automatically so what you see over here is uh, for a project we uh, gather for every report different kind of scenarios. The scenario is a set of different parameters for each report. So one report could run in different scenarios depending on the set of parameters. So you could define parameters for all those uh, different scenarios. Uh, we extract this, the parameter names, the parameter description, and we allow an insert uh, from an Excel template to take over all these values. So from the customer base, you, uh, you will get a, an Excel from our side with all possible combinations, and then you ask to fill them in. If we do that, uh, we could then mark each report and define what kind of profile we would need to run. So we could do that once for the old Oracle reports to get a, a template as a reference for all the reports. So you will see what's, uh, what's the result over here. So we create the report command line interface for all these things, and then you could run and generate the PDF documents. And on the other side, we do the same for the Jasper server. So you could run Jasper unit tests or consume the reports via Jasper web service. And then you will get the same result over here. So copy and paste that into your unit test environment and you could run and generate the, the Jasper reports over here in the same way. So that is easy. That is one click of a button and you, do, you are not forced to run the test day by day, night by night with entering one value after the other. So that helps uh, in the last phase for, for these uh, migration. But now it's time, I believe, to do the live demo. So I stop sharing my presentation um, and switch to our live environment. Um, you should see my Pitscon environment. Before we start with the migration, give me one uh, second to see what we are able to document on the existing uh, reports. So in my case, you see in my uh, environment, I load uh, one um, report uh, for, for this environment. 
and um, in this you uh, we are able to um, document these uh, these report in a very very fast and efficient way. So um, let's take uh, the report and see just as a uh, documentation how this report is. Um, Wait a second. How oh, this report is uh, consuming data and program units. So if I do this, I want to see the module and the dependency. I do not need run, to run over the entire report to get familiar with this. So I could uh, create such a graph as an overview, and I could see there is uh, this report consuming three queries, and the queries relying on my underlying database tables. So that is a very easy report. So the graph is very straightforward and, and, and very simple, but that helps me for a complex report to get an overview, which data is consumed, which groups are uh, created, which are, what are the dependency underneath these, these groups. The same affair I could do uh, for all the program units. So if I do that once more and just take care about the program units inside my reports, I will see that is very, very easy. So my report don't have any uh, insert before and after report or parameter trigger, but you could see under the group country, the customer, the order, the item or ID, I have a calculated field which use these program unit. So even there, I could directly see what are the dependency. And due to the fact that I could visualize the dependency, you could imagine that I could found placeholders functions, format triggers, which are no longer have any dependency. And that is what we call dead objects. So I could remove them. If there is a placeholder, which was once defined, but never ever used, I can get rid of it. So that is helps us in our preparation phase. So now go to the migration itself. I just logged into my environment. Ah, yes, my session has expired. That's true. Okay, so uh, you could see we, we are facing the same report over here. Just to give you an inside view, I just opened the report builder and you could see my report, which was uh, defined in a in report builder with all the three queries I could see before. And if I take a look at the paper layout, you will see it's a customer orders with a couple of repeating frames and elements inside. So that is very simple, very straightforward, but that is my first report I would take. So going back to our tool, uh, first of all, I have a reporting dashboard for my application. And in this uh, reporting dashboard, I could see metrics for different technologies. So if I take care about Jasper reports, I could see what are a more complex report and what is a more easier report. So, and, and all the reports have different weights. You could see my customer orders have a weight from 7.7, .7, the other one has 10.14, and the last one has more complex weight. That means if I'm a very experienced developer uh, and I, I need one hour to fine tune this report, I need exactly five times more to fine tune this report. That is the weight uh, measured. Depending on the velocity of the developer and the team, you could calculate out of this the time you need to fine tune uh, the report. And you could see uh, where are the complexity is. Um, so for this report, you could see I need 20% uh, for my analyze phase, 64% for the layout, and only 13% for different kind of functionalities. That is different in the other report, which consists of more business logic and less user inter or less layout components. The detail information will be given underneath. Now go to the reports migration. So I select my customer orders module I, uh, report I saw before. That is one I selected. And very easy, I could migrate this report. And he said, oh, wonderful, successfully migrated. You could see there is a migration time for my report name. And I'm able now to download the migrated report and I'm able to download the log file. So when I start with the log file first, you see there's a download of this text file. I open the text file in my editor and you could see exactly what I'm talking about before. So I have 25 boilerplates, all of them are migrated. 
I have 26 data items, all of them are migrated and so on and so on. So I could see exactly in detail what is uh, migrated. In more detail, I see exactly what is coming out from the boilerplate text, what I created for Jasper. And I could also download the Jasper report. Uh, you see uh, there's a jar XML file downloaded. So I could open them in the same way. And I just create open um, the tip go. I just think I just uh, already assigned the suffix to this, but I don't. Okay, I just open this download. You will see Jasper Studio will be open with my migrated report, which I download from our application data cube. That takes a second before every plugin is loaded into my studio environment. And you could see the same report with the same layout in Jasper, uh, which we created or which we saw before in Oracle reports. So um, what I uh, see over here, all my queries are generated and uh, the queries are taking over in the same way. You could see there's my select statement with all the parameters which has to be changed to uh, the syntax which is needed from Jasper reports. The parameter itself are generated. So I have a P end date and a P start date for my, uh, my report. And even the calculated fields, I believe underneath the item orders, we saw the functionalities. Uh, there is my calculated field price quantity, uh, which is uh, generated. In the list of to-do object, we will see that the PL SQL expression for this is not migrated. So I have to do that manually and I could do that afterwards. But let's go ahead with, uh, with another approach because that is a very simple report. And let's take a look on a more somehow more complex one. And I just uh, go to this one. Uh, So let's take the, the other one, which is more, a little bit more complex because if you could see that from the paper layout, we have one fragment in the trailer section. So there's an original uh, reporting frame in the trailer section. And in the main section, you could see there's a cascading list of objects uh, inside these, uh, these reports. So we have a lot of more fragments. So what I could decide over here now for more complex reports, I could decide what kind of uh, sub reports I like to generate for these report. So I could see over here all repeating frames in my uh, Oracle reports, which uh, depends on the queries. So all pure developer, I don't follow any naming convention for my query names, um, but I could decide and say, okay, wonderful. These Post Auftrag number, uh, that is a repeating frame. I know, and our analyze will show you that, that this repeating frame is used in a different, uh, in different other reports. So I could decide that these, um, this repeating frame should generate a separate uh, Jasper file. So I migrate over here. And now, rather than in this situation before, I have four different uh, reports generated. There's one um, rain report uh, with the main content inside as a real Jasper report with a trailer, which is separated because we want to harmonize footer and, and header and the repeating frame I mark. I could download them and open them as well. I did, just did that before with session. So you could see exactly the same reports over here. So I have the main report, which is empty, but, in that case, but it consists of two repeating frames. There's one repeating frame pointing to my main report. And for the footer, for the summary, I have a, a known sub report because it could be that I like to reuse this trailer report in a couple of other reports. So I define them once as a separate file and make them reusable for all the other reports. And that is a great uh, advantage from my point of view for Jasper to make your reporting landscape more maintainable. So that is uh, uh, very easy to, to do that. 
so coming back uh, now, and I could finalize my report uh, for my customer orts. At the end of the day, I like to deploy them to my Jasper server repository. So I set up a Java Jasper server repository. Um, so let me log in as an admin for this repository. And you could see I could create a, a folder structure and underneath my reports, I just created these customer reports, which is the one I migrated before without touching anything. So it's it just how we generate the, the report itself. And now most of our, our audience uh, will run in a forms environment. What I could do, I could now, rather than calling the Oracle report, I could call the new Jasper reports. And that is what I, prepare and let's see first of all how this works. I'm just running on a Mac. So um, to use forms, the best way for me is using this forms a standalone launcher. So I just uh, use my forms application as a standalone launcher. So I connect, the application will open on the other screen. So it's very, very easy, sorry for that. I set some default dates for begin and end date and just call the Jasper report. And you could see, that the Jasper reports will present me the same result as we did before in Oracle reports without the fine tuning. You see the formula column is not fin finished. I, I just don't create a new uh, expression for my formula color, column because you know the SQL, uh, PL SQL was a little bit bigger for that. So I miss that to do. It's my work I have to do in the, in the green bubbles, but I could call them from Oracle forms. How did we did that? Let's go back and see this in Oracle Forms. Beside my Oracle Report Builder, I just opened the Forms Builder with the same with the same uh, application I showed by you showed you. And there's a button called Jasper. And let's take a look behind. That's very easy uh, when button pressed. So it makes sense to create a global variable for the complete uh, URL uh, connection, login, pass, stuff, whatever you need. So you have to have uh, an anonymous uh, connection to the server to be able to run the reports. And then I have only to define two things. One of them is the report I want to call. You know them, it was under the reports folder, the customer orders module. I just mask uh, the slashes over here. And I hand over the start and end date in the same manner I did that for Oracle reports with uh, my items in my form. And at the end, I just call the document. Uh, and you could see, even if I'm running in the standalone launcher, I'm able to use WebShow document to consume uh, the direct output. If that is not your use case, you could also integrate them uh, in kind of a web service. You know, you could extend forms uh, by uh, using and consuming REST services. So you could do that as well. And last but not least, you could also run uh, Jasper server reports in a batch mode, in a backend mode with a couple of, that is what I said in the beginning, extra Java code, but it's possible to do. So with this, I just finalized my story, uh, how we uh, just, let me go back to this. And I want to go over here, open my uh, development environment. The story we talk about is what we give over here. So we upload our sources in the repository. We take care about the uh, um, harmonies of, of reports due to bringing function to database, et cetera, and, and uh, consolidate uh, queries. We do the estimation while running the Excel chart. Uh, we migrate the reports, fine tuning we skip, that is a Jasper, pure Jasper work, and then we are ready and done. Um, so with this, I'd like to hand over back to Johannes uh, with a couple of, uh, I believe, questions which arrive us before. So yes, Stefan, uh, there are a couple of questions. First of all, thank you very much. Uh, for uh, the insights and also also for uh, the live demo. It was very interesting to see which features um, are um, possible also with uh, Jasper reports, but on the other side also with our uh, reports replacer kit uh, from PIT. So uh, thanks a lot again. It was very interesting to see that. 
And uh, before we are going uh, straight away to uh, the questions, um, I think uh, you uh, participants will now probably ask yourself, uh, it was all very interesting to see, but um, which is my first step? What I can do as a first step? Um, and I think uh, we from PITS uh, have also um, the health and uh, uh, the possibilities to help you in that. Um, I would like to share my screen just for a couple of seconds. Um, so I think, yep. great. So as a next step also from our side, um, we uh, make your first step towards Jasper reports uh, easier with a quick check of uh, your report. Um, with our help, you will get a great uh, first impression and an effort estimation for your uh, specific report. Um, that is a great way, I think, uh, also to start um, by getting an overview uh, of the whole uh, report application, but also on specific reports. So, um, this is uh, also one uh, point what uh, we address also with our customers and which is uh, very in, uh, will be seen in a very positive way. Um, so feel free to contact us also by uh, over our um, website, uh, pits.com slash migration report to Jasper um, slash and dash open. Um, and uh, also directly uh, get in contact. Uh, we are more than happy to speak with you and also to answer um, your questions. Um, there are also um, two other ways also to uh, go ahead uh, also in a in a uh, um, in a uh, modernization uh, process. Um, so the other ways would be. Um, also with an assessment and uh, a proof of concept, um, you decide um, and uh, you are uh, sending to us a specific um, a report or a cluster of reports, and we are going um, to do with you uh, together an assessment and also a proof of concept to give you um, also an overview uh, how the reports uh, can be migrated to uh, just for report, but also um, can hand over uh, documentation and also do uh, a real migration as well. On the other side, we are also happy to support you with full migration projects, um, also with our knowledge and also with our tools and products. So um, feel free to get in touch with us and uh, to reach out. We are more than happy to help you in, uh, in your um, modernization process um and uh, to answer your question uh, speaking about questions i think um we received a lot of questions in the in the past uh, days and in the past time um just to go straight ahead into the q and a session um i think very interesting, as I uh, said before, and I'm more than happy to have uh, Stefan uh, today with us as also an expert, because I think he's uh, the best knowledge source uh, uh, we could win for today and also for uh, uh, the time in general. So uh, Stefan, I hope and uh, uh, that you are still with us and uh, you uh, can hear me. Yeah. Okay, great, cool. So, um, one of the first question, uh, questions uh, which arrived uh, in, the, in the past days was why just the report? I believe mm -hmm. from our perspective, um, it's, it's a natural choice to use just the reports because uh, on one hand, it's, it's very developer friendly. Um, so in the past, most of the Oracle reports will be developed by developers, it's not a self, uh, consuming tool for end customers. So uh, there are a lot of uh, functionalities, queries, uh, et cetera, implemented. And everything which you could do with Oracle reports, you could cover with Jasper reports. And, and that is the good, good news. Um, and um, it's, it's well designed for pixel perfect printing uh, using Java, JavaScript. And I believe that is 
that is the most, from my point of view, the, the most reasons. And last but not least, it's, there is an open source uh, edition available, which you could use and start with. Uh, so that's good to know. Cool, interesting. So uh, speaking about that, just uh, the Jasper reports, um, is there a way um, how somebody could integrate the Jasper reports into the Oracle forms? Yeah, so I, I demonstrate one of those different uh, functionalities. At least there are more than three ways possible to integrate Jasper. One of them is web show document to do that. The other one I mentioned is you could uh, consume them over a web service. So you could integrate Java web services into forms with a PL SQL bridge. Last but not least, you could call them over the database with the Java client on database side that is very uh, uncomfortable, but often used when you have a lot of batch program uh, batch reports. So at the end, yes, uh, it's it's uh, possible to do. And um, for us, it's uh, it's appropriate to create a library uh, and attach them to uh, any forms which call a report, so that you uh, minimize the number of changes you do in in your forms application. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting as well. Cool. Um, and uh, I think this is also one uh, one very interesting uh, question also for um, people and participants who are uh, dealing also with the costs. Um, so how does uh, cost of Jasper reports compare to the cost of mm -hmm. BI publisher li licenses? Yeah, so um, uh, we, we could answer this question together with the next one. Does Jasper reports have any limitation? Uh, yes. Um, so um, you compare different editions of Jasper report with one edition of BI Publisher. So that is not, at the end, it's not fair. So BI Publisher is a paid uh, product and have a lot of capabilities, which you do not see in uh, inside the uh, community edition of Jasper reports. So talking about dashboards and customization of reports, and self-services, etc. All those things are possible with the BI Publisher, but not available in the Community Edition. But to be fair, Jasper Reports also have uh, um, a Commercial Edition. And more than this, on top of the Commercial Edition, there are a couple of additional BI products from TIPCO available, which at the end reach the same uh, functionality like BI Publisher integrated in the Analytics Cloud. So depending on the use case of the customer, if it's only focused on migrating Oracle reports with the same functionality, I would say Jasper reports do not have any limitation uh, comparing to BI Publisher and mm -hmm. is cost-free. Okay, cool. Okay, um, getting back to, uh, to the technical side of Jasper reports, there is also one question from our participants who asked about the differences in the environment. Um, I think that um, environments uh, uh, compared uh, the Jasper report environment with, uh, with the Oracle report environment. Yes, I think so as well. And, and they are not so different really. You, you set up a report server uh, running as a, as a server, a managed server in the WebLogic server, connecting database sources and uh, creating a file structure for your uh, report files. And that is more or less the same you did in, in, uh, in Jasper reports. In Jasper Studio, you see perhaps the admin user interface I showed to you. So there is also a possibility to define your database connections and set up a folder structure for all your reports and setting up a, a web server who's taking care about all the requests. So from that point of view, they are more or less similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And the next question would be um, about, um, well, we spoke about very important things also in the couple of minutes and in the past hour, and one of our participants also asked, which is the most important thing to validate uh, before the change or migration. Mm -hmm. What, what I saw in the past in our project we run is um, that it's a good chance to uh, improve your reporting landscape. So a couple of reports are only designed for exporting data to Excel or something like this. There may be better chances to, or better solutions rather than reporting that. On the other hand, uh, a couple of re 
environments uh, saw duplicate reports because you are limited in Oracle reports for dynamic layout. So hiding a column and using this space for other values is not as easy in Jasper uh, in Oracle reports rather than in Jasper. So I saw duplicate Oracle reports, which could be synchronized and consolidated to one. So it's a matter of using this chance of a migration to improve your landscape. Um, mm -hmm. and bring all these things together. And we help to identify all these candidates. So even if you have more than a thousand reports for us, is a click on a button to identify duplicates or similars or something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, extremely interesting. Cool, nice. Um, so <laughs> this one is also very interesting. As I said, uh, uh, all the questions which uh, 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 arrived are very, uh, very specific and also very interesting. Um, but is this automate tools with minimum interaction from developers? Uh, is somebody asking? Well, that is what we try to do. That is what we try to achieve. Uh, everything which is decidable for a machine learning algorithm to generate uh, should be covered by our tool. So we generate styles, we generate the queries, we define the parameters, um, walk through the uh, sub reports, etc. So we try to minimum all these things. So at the end, to those which are not yet decidable by a, by a machine. Uh, to, to uh, left this task to the developer. And mm -hmm. you could see we, from the layout perspective, we are very, very near and most than near to, to what we had, uh, saw in the Oracle reports. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. The uh, next one would be um, about the conversion of the report and how long does it take mm -hmm. um, to convert it? As, I, as you may know, or as you may seen in, the, in this uh, very, very large uh, Excel chart, we uh, calculate a huge amount of key indicator or key performance indicator per report, depending on, on the effort for uh, fine tuning, depending on how complex your SQL statement, uh, how your, your real SQL uh, units are written, uh, how often do you use SRW packages with specific functionalities, et cetera. So that is depending on uh, on a various range uh, from less than an hour to more than a week. So it's uh, difficult to, to give these number as an average for all reports, depending, as I said, on your landscape. And with a quick check and an assessment, you will get the answer very, very accurate. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, also last but not least, um, somebody's asking about uh, the FMW WebLogic infrastructure. Um, yeah. Does it use the existing FMW WebLogic <laughs> infrastructure? I think um, this is also very interesting for you. You could, you could. So uh, the Jasper server itself acts like a web application. So uh, you could deploy them also in the WebLogic server, but it's very, very rare. I don't see any customer using these kind of, of uh, deployment or infrastructure because uh, it's much more easier to deploy um, the Jasper server on a lightweight, uh, perhaps Tomcat WebLogic server, uh, sorry, Tomcat uh, web server um, and maintain this. It's, it's much more lightweight with less fo footprint rather than the WebLogic server. And uh, it's fine enough to run. Beside this, um, there is another option to, as I said in the beginning, a couple of our customers decide to use um, not the standalone server to run. They use uh, the JAR libraries of the Jasper uh, edition to integrate that in their application. So could, you could use uh, the same functionalities from uh, Jasper uh, reports uh, in, a, in an integrated Java library. So that could be also an option. That is not directly focused forms customer, but those who also in parallel migrate forms to new tech or other technologies mm -hmm. like Java or JavaScript applications. All right, cool. Very interesting. Thank you very much, uh, okay. Stefan. Um, as I said before, uh, since uh, we had a limited uh, time, we decided to answer a part of uh, the questions uh, which arrived um in the live q a but for all the other questions also we uh, decided to um, answer them also within an uh, email or also on the social media in the next days 
So if you haven't already, uh, make sure that you're following our pages on LinkedIn um, uh, to stay updated. So uh, I think uh, very interesting uh, things what we saw today and also a lot of information. Um, I hope this webinar was uh, very interesting also for you as it was also for me. Uh, feel free to get in contact with us uh, also to discuss your specific uh, situation and for further questions um, uh, which arose, uh, feel free to get in contact also with uh, Stefan, uh, also by phone or email, uh, also feel free to uh, contact me, um, also to uh, connect you with our technical department. And for everything else, we are more than happy to hear from you. So thanks again a lot for your attendance and hope to see you also in the next webinars. Um, stay safe and healthy. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, Anus, for hosting. Thank you, Stefan. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.